Uh, next, we're going to look at this one. Uh, not trading crossways or triangulated pairs. What was a good reason why we shouldn't be trading? Does anyone remember what these were, first of all? Without, without, the dollar. without the dollar. Yeah, cross rate or a triangulated pair. This basically means that the US dollar is not included in the currency pair. This means there's a third variable. Okay, if you got sterling, if you got euro sterling, that's actually going euro, US dollar, sterling. The third currency there, which means there's a, higher, there's a higher probability than normal that something could go wrong. Okay, there's something else we need to consider. So we don't really need to be doing it. Now, what we're saying here is look, don't be trading this initially. Trading intraday, I don't think you should really ever be jumping into these anyways. Okay, I'm not saying it's, it's an impossible thing you should never ever do. But the, the, the probability of success is less. Do you want to trade probable trades or improbable trades? Probable, probable trades, of course, okay? So when we're trading uh, currency pairs, especially intraday, okay, we're trading the currency pairs that have the US dollar included. The four that we're starting off with are what? Swiss franc, euro, pound, and dollar. Perfect! Swiss franc? Euro, sterling, oh, you missed one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dollars in all of those. Yeah. Dollars in every single one of those, okay? Those are the trades, those are the currency pairs that you want to be trading. Uh, when you're trading your intraday stuff uh, as we go through it, okay? Uh, continuing on here, this is great right here. This is kind of on the same theme that we've just been speaking about. <coughs> Being an expert in one or two currencies, okay? And then branching out from there. This is what I thought one of the, one of the biggest benefits to trading the Forex market is there's not that many currency pairs. That doesn't mean there's not a lot of trading opportunities. What that's actually saying to you is that it gives you an incredible opportunity to specialize in a few, to build a very nice foundation trading the majors, and then building on top of that and, ex and expanding out to some of the minor currency pairs, okay? But it's really good. I say to a lot of people, you know what? Focus on sterling US dollar. Focus on euro US dollar, especially for your intraday stuff. Really get an understanding as to how these things work. Develop an understanding of the characteristics of these currency pairs. For instance, when sterling hits the pivot point, does it normally dash straight through it, or does it normally hang around it a little bit longer? When euro hits the pivot point, again, does it normally bash straight through it, or does it tend normally or generally to hang around it a little bit longer? Okay? And all these types of things are really going to help you develop your trading skills and actually begin to apply the right level of discretion that's needed to trade successfully and still be trading within the rules. Okay, so we're going to be the expert or green expert. Um, in two currency pairs to get ourselves started, the best ones to do there, sterling US dollar and euro US dollar, and then coming on to the yen, uh, as well as the Swiss franc. Okay? Um, the other one that, that we like to say here is this. Um, start shooting and get used to taking profits. Okay? Does this sound like something that would be fun to get used to? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Getting used to actually taking profits. What we're saying here is this. Start shooting for the 20 pip trade initially. Okay, it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically 20 pips. I mean, if you have a nice pivot trade, you're going to know what that looks like tomorrow. If you have a very nice pivot trade and you're shooting for 100 pips, <coughs> excuse me, 20 is probably going to be cutting a little bit short. But the point is this. Once you start getting close to hitting your targets, get used to taking profits. Get used to the discipline of pulling money out of the account or pull, pulling money from the, the trade into your uh, trading account. Okay, why? Because this helps you get the discipline to do yourself out of winning trades. Think about it like this. A winning trade is actually, uh, taking profit is actually stopping a winning trade. You understand there's some difficulty there. Yeah. That's what we were saying a few minutes ago. Yeah. You've got to actually say, no, enough is enough. I'm happy with the amount of money which I currently have, and I'm going to stop that. That's not something that necessarily happens overnight. That's something that you really got to get used to. Which is why we're saying here, you know what? Get very used to taking some money, putting it into your current account, knowing what it feels like, to make money from trading, keeping that motivation going, and also beginning to recognize practically the effect that 20 to 30 or 40 pips on a trade has on your account when you begin to add that together and see your account compound. Because then you suddenly realize, hey, I don't need to hit 1,000 pips a day to really make money from this. I need to be hitting 150 to 200 a day. And that's going to be incredible. 500 pips a week is life-changing pips. Yeah, 500 pips a week are life changing. You know that. Like 500 pips a week are life changing. We're going to blow that out of the water. Okay? 500 pips a week is life changing. We're going to go beyond that. Okay? The only way we're going to get there is through actually taking our profits and getting used to taking our profits. Uh, next secret. Something else we need to be <coughs> considering and understand. Yes. HLC. The we're we're going to do. We're going to do that in a few minutes. Okay? Yeah, the OHLC. We're, we're going to talk about the OHLC bar. It's going to answer some of your questions as well that we had earlier. Okay? Uh, something else we need to understand when we're trading uh, is the MACD. Okay? Does anyone know what MACD stands for? Yeah, <coughs> moving Average Convergence Divergence. Okay? In the forex world, this is absolutely massive. 
what I'm going to do as we go is really teach you how to implement this into your trading. But you cannot place a trade, especially intraday, if you don't know what the MACD is doing. Okay, because if you don't know what's going on with the MACD, you can really be walking into a trap. Hey, everything looks great. This thing is falling. MACD is telling you, shouting out to you, no, don't do it. Okay, if we ignore the MACD, we're going to get into some trades which look nice. We're going to be stopped out of those things very, very quickly. They're so useful. MACD is very useful. Uh, probably most effective trading the Forex markets. Okay? Here's something else. Don't trade on Monday. The weekend created bad data. Month, quarter, and year end. Everybody's saying, right, when are we going to trade? Okay? Last couple of examples ago, we said we didn't trade on Thursday and Friday of that week. Remember, that's not Thursday and Friday of every single week. Okay? That was just that particular week. The main one here is the Monday. Especially yeah, I'll, I'll finish the radio. I'll explain this one too. Not trading on the Monday. Why do you think this is something which we need to consider? Because they're not in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because of the weekend. Okay, there's some things. Go okay, the world doesn't stop just because you can't trade the forks on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, things are still happening. So what happens on Monday morning? Basically, all the traders have to interpret everything over the weekend and start trading according to that. So there's there's a, there's a chance that things could be a little bit muffled or that things aren't going to be acting as they normally do. Okay? What I normally say to people is this. If you're desperate to trade on a Monday, okay, demo it for a little while and see if it's going to be worth it to you. If it's not going to be worth it to you, then you don't want to do it anyway. But if you're sitting here saying, hey, you know what? I'm demoing this thing. I'm making money from this thing. Real money makes real money. I'm also put some real money into this account and actually trade it. Then do it. But what I'm saying is be very cautious on Monday because sometimes what happens is you come to Monday morning, things are a little bit crazy from the weekend, and the pivots maybe don't trigger as they should, or the pivot points might even be a little bit off. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Cool. Okay, you understand what I'm saying there? Then they'll take the Forbes account to get yourself started. I was having a conversation with the Roger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, having a conversation with Roger. I said, yeah, you've got to demo trade this thing a little bit. I said, yeah, you need to demo trade the Forex market a little bit. But you've got to have a cutoff point on this thing. Okay? Because a demo account is nice, but a real account makes real money. So that makes sense. Okay? You're never going to make any money demoing for the rest of your life. I spoke to a guy one time. This is 100%. Unbelievable to me. Okay? This guy told me he'd been trading for 15 years. Okay? That's a long time. I'm 26 years old. 15 years is the majority of my life. Okay? So I'm thinking, wow, that must be awesome. And I said, what? Well, you're doing really well. I said, how has it influenced your life? I like these stories. How has trading impacted the way you do things? He said, well, it hasn't really. I said, why hasn't it? I said, because I've been demoing it for 15 years. Okay, has anyone ever played Super Mario Brothers? You might as well just play Super Mario Brothers for 15 years. You understand what I'm saying? There's no money in that. You've got to have a cutoff point on this thing, okay? Demo trade, really, why are you demo trading? You're demo trading to get used to using the software. The last thing you want to do is say, hey, I understand the strategies, I know how to trade, I'm going to enter this trade, all your theory, everything is right, and you just simply lose on trade if you click the wrong button. That's really what demo is for, okay? But you need to have some form of cutoff. Say, hey, you know what? I'm demoing this amount of time, and then I'm going to cut that short, and then I'm going to make sure I'm trading with real money. Okay, we're going to be, we're going to be looking at some trades this evening, uh, some income generators. If you have real money in your accounts and you're comfortable using the starting software and the brokers and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to say to you, hey, why don't you trade with real money? Because that's really where we start making money. That's really, really where we start learning how to trade with real money, okay? Do you guys want to make real money or fake money? Real money. Of course you do, okay? This side of the room wants to make real money. What about this side? Nobody answered. Yes. Yeah, of course you do. 